Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Looking for Love in All the Wrong Dust Jackets, a show where three cool ladies talk to you about everything in romance, whether that's books, movies, TV shows, whatever we like. I'm Liz. I'm Danny. I'm Wiggles. And welcome to the show. But before we get started, I have to warn you that we are unhinged and unfiltered. So if you don't like people swearing or talking about the sexy times, then here's your chance. Now you know. Go away. But politely, in like a re-respect that you were here for a little bit, Conway. Correct. Yeah. Goodbye. Okay. Today, we are talking about Ensnared by Tiffany Roberts. But before we get into the story, we got to talk about what else is going on in our lives. Uh, who wants to talk to me about what you've been reading, watching, etc.? Great input, Danny. I would like to raise you, not shit. Oh, for God's sake. Liz? We've had a lot of going on, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why you plan ahead. So you, so you only tell people in one episode like one or two things and you're the the only one bombing us with a thousand books i haven't read anything for this episode but i've watched two tv shows that are based on books so (laughs) i finally finished the first season of the wheel of time because the second season just came out a little bit ago as of this recording i i don't know i liked the show a lot i know they changed a lot from the book And it's been a long time since I've read The Eye of the World, so I was kind of okay with it. But I think a lot of people that perhaps are very big Wheel of Time fans might not be okay with it. I'm only there for the hot guy. Lan? Yeah. Who's the character? I don't remember the actor off the top of my head. Yeah. He's very hot. Yeah. There's a few scenes towards the end of the first season where he takes his shirt off. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Uh, And then I also watched a show that came out a few years ago um, called High Fidelity, based on the book High Fidelity by Nick Hornby, but it stars Zoe Kravitz, and it was really good, but unfortunately, who didn't re-up it for another season, so we got one season, and that's it. Boo, you whore. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could say that I've, the so the TikTok series, Hell's Bells, she was gone for like a month because she was on like a family vacation, and I need to get the fuck away from social media for a minute vacation, and she's now back, and so I, I put the hell's bells playlist on and just like let it go there is so many episodes i know there's over 300 of them you could do that for like a whole day Uh uh-huh anyway Mm. i guess i mean if i have to contribute you don't have to no it's too late now Uh, i've started finally watching the second season of the great so oh i want to see that it's fucking awesome it is no what not second season third season third season i started watching the third season um, which came out like a while ago, like a while, while ago. It did. It did. I just didn't watch it at the time because I didn't have time for some reason. But I fucking love that show and I highly recommend it. I have not seen any of that show and I really so think I should. You absolutely should. Yes. Um, t- here are the two reference points that I'm going to give you for, for whether or not you should watch this. If you have ever wanted to watch something that has all the like visual stun of like the Marie Antoinette movie Mm -hmm. and and the like loose (laughs) loose approximation of history um with the fun of like a rom-com and the drama of like a like uh, a courtroom a court court drama not like courtroom drama but like royalty people royalty yes um if you like any of those things especially if you can imagine those things in combination and loving them this is the show for you it's so Mm -hmm. fucking good it is yeah the acting top tier the like comedy top tier the costumes and set and and lighting and and music choices fucking top tier it's it's Honestly, it's not underrated because a lot of people appreciate it, but it's underrated in that not enough people like know about it. Well, and the fun thing about that show is a lot of times when we get court dramas or like historical shows, the women are either powerful but have to act subservient and the men are like, oh, I'm strong and I make all the choices. And it really makes fun of that because Peter is a dumb dumb. Yes. He's a, he's a pretty dumb dumb. The emperor. He's and a Catherine, pretty violent dum dum. Yes. And Catherine is Catherine the Great. Right. So she's just like, you stupid. 
you're so stupid. Why are you so stupid? You could not be stupid. He's like, but stupid? But I have all the power. I just want to party. <laughs> yes. I also love that he's a giant foodie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but that, that entertains me to no end. Yeah. Good show. Check it out. Yeah. So you want to talk about some spider fucking? Let's talk about the spider boning. Oh, oh. Okay. So let's he's get got into... nine legs. No, he doesn't. Bow. He doesn't even have eight. Oh, my God. Did you even read the book? No, he I know. He's legs. got six and then he's got four, four arms, arms. cause he's a fucking freak. I get it. <laughs> you ruined the joke. The jokes only work if they're accurate. Listen, anybody also, who hasn't read it and like sees a fucking spider on the front gets it. They also, get it. <laughs> the joke isn't going to be seen by our audience, Wigs. They can't see you right now. They can count. They can count. How many legs do spiders typically have? They have eight. <laughs> this one has six. Well, that's because he's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so <laughs> let's get into Ensnared by Tiffany Roberts. Who would like to tell us what this book is about? I can do that. I do have a question, though. How is his name said? I read it Catan. You got it right. Okay, good. Yeah, yep, that's how they say it in the book. Catan. Catan. <laughs> is, is, is that voice used in the audiobook? A little bit, yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, Lord. Yeah, when she's in danger. Katan. That okay. That one wasn't. That one was a little, a little exaggerated. But otherwise. <laughs> anyway, so basically, it starts out with Katan. He is a big spider man. He basically kind of lives alone in what is essentially it's called the the tangle, which is kind of the outskirts, the jungleish thing around the city that the spiders live in. And he has to go every month and do an offering to their gods. The only problem with this is that he has to go do this and the queen wants him. She wants everything about him. She's got a big lady boner for him. She's got mm-hmm. a big lady boner for him. And he wants nothing to do with that because she's a cunt. And she's so now bizarre. threatening like his loved ones, his friends and his sister because that's the only family member he has left is his brood sister. And then, so he goes and does his offering. He pisses her off. Yay. That Whatever. And then he goes back out into the tangle and he's hunting for himself because he's going to go home. He's like, ooh, look, I'm going to have meat. And then another creature kind of catches him off guard and he falls down this kind of dark, weird hole that everybody thinks is haunted. Which doesn't, I mean... It has, like, vines over top of it, too, so it's also darker down there than, I think, the rest of the tangle. I'm hoping that this is something that they explain further in future books, because right now it just seems like a sinkhole. Yeah. Well, it's a crash site, which we learn. Yes. Right. But the the hole has... It's been there for a while, yeah, uh, independent I, of the crash site. Yes. It's so just that that's the part so that's happens, confusing. Yeah. Um. Or at least it was for me. I was like, wait, so what's happening here? Magical hole. <laughs> it definitely is like <laughs> a crash site that goes d- very dar, very dar, very far down. Yes. Oh. Anyway, Danny, we so, interrupted you. Anyway, he falls down the hole and then he finds a ship, which you find out later, but he doesn't really know what it is. It's a weird cave. And he goes in and he finds cryotubes and finds a girl in one of them. Yes. Opens it up. Her name is Ivy. He steals her away and takes her to his cocoon nest thing in the air, which, quite frankly, would make me nauseated as fuck. I like hammocks as much as the next girl, but hot damn. And then he wants to live there with her. He likes her a lot, and they have to figure out how to talk to each other because, yeah, no. Yeah, there's a lot of time spent on that. So, yeah. And he's going to piss off the queen. Uh, I assume... I assume she ain't happy by the end of this book, but yep. who fucking knows? Oh, you know, we'll get into it. Anyway. I mean, we know. We do we, know. But we don't, we don't know the outcome. We're just left with silence. That is true. Furious. So this book is by Tiffany Roberts, which is actually the pseudonym for Tiffany and her husband, Robert, because they write the books together. 
I've always wondered when books are written by like multiple people, how does that work? Because, and this is a tangent, but does one person do like the first draft and or like do they come up with the outline and the characters together and then like one person does the first draft? Because a writing, the voice and stuff, your style of which you write in, if two people are doing it, isn't going to be like clunky? I think it really depends on the writing team. Um, I remember when I was in high school and going into college, I read this series called the Wicked series. Mm. Um, no connection to the musical, but it it was like a, you know a teenage witch kind of coming sure. of age thing, right? I couldn't tell you too much detail about it anymore, but the way that they did it was one person wrote the first book, one person wrote the second book, and then the third one was a combination of the two points of view. Another one, Christina Loren, I don't know how they write, but it feels very much like their writing is is constantly overlapping. Yeah. Like I don't see the seams no. very much. But I've also read books where each person picks a POV. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh so Tiffany and Robert have written all sorts of sci-fi monster romance books. They have a Patreon where they have collected a bunch of very sexy art for their characters. And did I pay to look at the very sexy art? Yes, I did. It is nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, I mean, these characters are fantasy sci-fi. So it's right. you know kind of like a little bit more cartoony sometimes. Not cartoony, but you know what I mean? Uh, but it's nice. So if you're into it. Check it out. Check it out. Okay. What do you guys want to talk about about this book? I feel like I know I have one big gripe. And I can do it right away or we can wait until the end. Let's do it right away. I think let's do it right away because I have a feeling off that band-aid. we have yeah. similar gripes. Well, I think it's going to just, if, if I just talk about it now, then I can talk about everything I did like. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because yes. I feel like there's a lot of stuff I did like in this book. But the one gripe I had, and it isn't like one moment in time, it is one overarching issue Mm -hmm. and that is her pacing or the author's pacing i'm not you know Mm -hmm. which one of them i find it to be really bad because you spend the first 20 percent of a book that is a romance novel that you pick up to read about the romance and the interaction between two characters because there's only two characters in the romance and you spend the first 20 effing percent of this damn book where the female main character doesn't exist it's all just this fantasy politics yeah i same thing i because you had said because you had read this book previous um and we're rereading it since we decided mm-hmm. to do it for the podcast you had said you thought the book the beginning was very boring and i was like oh liz might be over exaggerating it's liz no offense. what do you mean not not that's what not the fuck do you mean? That's not what I meant. What I meant is that we have differing opinions on things sometimes as far as like what interests us. Yeah, fair. And so I try to take those things with a grain of salt because, of course, I will make my own thought process on things. Yeah, no. Um, I was like 25% in the book and I'm like, where the fuck this bitch? Because I need some spider fucking at this point. I don't want to hear about your politics. Well, and even when she does show up, the, the none of the like, I mean, there's like a little bit of teasing. Very little, but there is some. But then like none of it happens until like the last 25% of the book. And you're like, okay. Like oh, it that- just takes forever to get there. Yeah. It yeah. takes forever. Every single step takes forever. So there's like the political drama where it takes forever for her to even land on the fucking planet. Right. And then it takes forever for them to get to a point where like they even like understand that the other one is an intelligent being. And then that, t- and then that takes a different turn where they're like talking to each other, like they're pets, which I will have plenty to say about later um but then like even after they do kind of get to the point where they're like yes i'm i would like a piece of that spider dick i would like a piece of that naked mole rat dick um (laughs) or badge whatever we'll figure it out when we get there (laughs) they don't do it for like another huge chunk of the book and so yeah the pacing is really terrible because i'm just like why am i reading this what is the point cut like the first half 
of the book off Mm -hmm. and then just shorten it great and I didn't I guess mind them they're like getting to know each other part as much I actually kind of really liked the middle of the book I did think that there were just like paragraphs that could be trimmed and and shit but the the plot it's like there was two books two very distinct and different books and somebody tried to shove them together and they should not have they should have written the fantasy political drama and then they should have written the romance and they are they and never the two shall meet well and it's i i don't have a problem with like the political drama being a part of the book it's a good like an antagonist situation and everything but there was just too much they're too compartmentalized yeah. yes right like, like he's never dealing with her at the same time that he's dealing with the political drama and like she has no fucking clue about what any of this shit is through most of the book yeah and even right. when she does know she knows like the simplified version the very he dealt her. Version yeah of like it. <laughs> so so it's like it, the thing of for me if you're gonna call it a romance novel I feel like the romance has to be the core of the book and the storytelling that you're doing. But in order for that to truly be the core of your storytelling, it needs to have roots Mm -hmm. in every single piece of what's happening, or at least the majority. And this was like one half's romance, one half sci-fi, just like you said. Yeah. And there were, there was zero crossover. Well, and if you're going to have a plot like that, where there is all of these external factors, then that needs to be the thing that's driving some either aspect of the romance, whether it's a conflict or how they get together. But literally none of that. Mm -mm. Like the, the romance story had absolutely nothing to do with his situation with the queen at Mm -hmm. all. Well, and even if you were to say like, they didn't have a lot of conflict between them, which I think is kind of, a little bit of an issue for me too. Like they need to be, they need to have some sort of conflict fighting situation. Like, mm-hmm. n- and she didn't even get mad at him when he wouldn't take her to the ship. And that was the main conflict between the two of them. And it just kind of was like him eventually being like, all right, I guess I'll take you to the ship. Well, I don't want to compare this t- to uh, ice plant barbarians too much, but I will say I never thought <laughs> I would be s- prepared to uh, give praise to ice planet barbarians but at least like the motivations for those characters make fucking sense yeah like you're you're gonna tell me that like you crash landed on this planet and you're lucky to be alive and your first instinct isn't going to be i need to do everything i can to get back to my people what you don't know what that guy is saying to you for the longest time but you like yeah she never tries to escape which would I guess maybe be an overdone trope, but that's because that's the first thing you would do. Right. That's human instinct. Yeah. And like, if you want to give us the idea that like, she's so desperate for comfort and kindness that she goes like blundering into his arms, Mm -hmm. don't write a backstory that undercuts that where she has trust issues because there was a guy who treated her very badly. Oh my God. Very badly. (laughs) Like you've just, you've, You've taken something that could have been easy and made it difficult for no reason. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I don't like that backstory. I actually really did. I thought it's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. But as a backstory, I'm like, okay, that could actually turn her into like a very independent, strong person. But it doesn't. But it didn't. Right. And that's why it's like it's a wasted thing, like a throwaway. Then then leave it out right if you're not going to actually have it flavor the person she's turned into the only then why thing, tell us it, it even happened well it did two things it explained why she ended up on this um spaceship to go off and never see anybody on earth ever again and then it showed why she was so like excited to have somebody who like treated her with a little bit more care than anybody else had also why she's She's pretty adaptable. I will give her that. Yeah. Like, she's learning everything she possibly can and fairly quickly. And you could argue that's because, I mean, she lived in her car for a while. She went through a fucking tornado in that car. Yeah. I don't know. It. To, the, the. I think for me, it the, the reactions that she has 
are only justifiable if you're doing just that you're justifying them you know Mm -hmm. you're like trying to find a way for them to connect but if you just look at them on the surface most people who have been truly harmed in in a romantic situation don't have the reaction of i will just trust the first thing to come along and be nice to me right there's there's always going to be that hesitation of like you could be the next son of a bitch that hurts me so like it, it, it I don't know that I find that confusing. Well, I, uh, the only thing to that point is she didn't have a choice but to trust him because she couldn't even get out of his nest. Yeah, I mean, th- yes, but um, she didn't even try either. I, know. I do wish she at least would have had like <laughs> hell one moment where he was gone and she like contemplated like how do I get out of here or even like looked around like there should have been more internal monologue of her being like where do I think I crashed how do I get back there Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff it also kind of makes her seem kind of a little selfish too because like she doesn't think about I mean she does when they're actually in the ship but all of that time she doesn't think about well what about the other people that were with me right you know he told her some of them were dead but he didn't know if all of them were and he told her that well how could he know he doesn't even know how the machinery operates yeah he thinks that they were in cocoons like, right he doesn't even understand the concept of what it is right which i think was there a is opportunity of her like having to explain to him what all of that was there's just one little blurb of him being like and she explained to me that she came from this really crazy world and it's like you could have like had like a whole fun scene. There was just mm-hmm. like one scene where she was like, "Oh, buildings as tall as these trees." Right. Mhm. Well, and why did we have so much <laughs> this fucking political drama, but we don't have time for a proper explanation of what earth is? Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I did enjoy the book. I just there was some gripes. Yeah, so we uh, we got we got my big gripe out of the way, which was it was two two books, two books, not one. Mm-hmm. Yes, very much so. I have, I really only have two big gripes, which is surprising for me. <laughs> uh, my my first gripe, and this is one I know Danny shares with me, is what the fuck was that ending? What the fuck oh, was that ending? Furious. It was furious. just just chop. I realized that, like, it's another book and blah, blah, blah. But, like, fuck you. I hate. It's not even a cliffhanger. No. I hate books that, like, you know they're trilogies, so the story continues. But that still means that each book needs to have, like, its own three-act plot or however, you know, yes. whatever, yeah, how many it, acts your plot is going to have. It all needs but, a beginning, middle, and end. Yeah. It still needs to have that. And in this case, we built up the queen as the big bad. And every once in a while, her fucking, this wasn't even her first lieutenant. It was like her fucking second or third lieutenant. Um, if you want to, they're not lieutenants, but like. It's Equivalent. Not, yeah. 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 They're claw. Um, I think they're called. The claw. The <laughs> they are. He's, he's the, the first claw, which is like the, the, the main hunter um, or the lead hunter. And he shows up a couple of times in the book and then he shows up at the end so he also he wants the queen yeah can can i can i just be so honest you know how my brain does crazy shit yes so (laughs) when they whenever they would talk about the claw because they called him the fucking the claw a couple of times in the book all i could think was the claw decides who will go and who will stay (laughs) the claw um so it was really hard to take their character seriously <laughs> it's hard to take him seriously anyway because he's just like i want to fuck the queen so bad and you're like why she's a cunt like she is mean to everybody around her she's got, like she's not nice to anybody well you, it's not it's not a romance reason he wants the fucking power from right, it right sure. right 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 but well you gotta you gotta respect a bitch living in her power right you know what fuck them all I, I, I like I'm not even mad at her I was like <laughs> she's starving out all of their people yeah which well. we also don't get a fucking conclusion on like yeah. so many threads that are just dangling which I get that's supposed to like convince you to read the next books but it actually just made me crabby it made me furious like if it if I had had a physical copy of this book I would have thrown it across the room I am not going to throw my iPad because I like that thing too much but <laughs> I literally like I shut it and just like set it aside 
and then glared at it like it had mm-hmm. insulted my mother. Well, like I finished it and I was listening to the audiobook and I was like, oh, is there an air? Play. The fuck? <laughs> Play. And then I realized it was this dumb book with this dumb ending. What the fuck? You don't end a book like that. I had to suppress the urge to get into our group chat because I didn't think you had finished it quite yet because I was not very, I was almost done when we talked yesterday. And so I had to suppress the urge to get into the group chat and be like, what the fuck? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was so furious. Well, I'm going to be completely honest with you. There sometimes, uh, even when I say I'm not going to read another book in a series, um, I'm still curious enough that there's a potential I might read the next book. I not did. with this. Out of spite. Oh, out of I, spite. I did. That was my first read through. This second time, I did start reading it a little bit. But um, the issue, I don't know. The, the The reviews I saw online is people saying that it does delve more into Ketons, Ketons? um and ivy's relationship and i'm like okay i can do that katans yes sorry sorry i would dip, was like uh, like the sword katan like the sword um katan and ivy's relationship but i do not care about the queen and i think she shows up even more in the next book and i do not care about any of that so i probably won't actually read it all the way through that bitch is horny i mean i might read it for the monster fucking yeah yeah so wiggles what's your second gripe my second gripe and this is one that's personal i know that some people this is their kink and i ain't here to kink shame you you do whatever you got to do in your bedroom but i do not find it cute or or enticing or adorable or whatever to fucking treat your potential partner like they're a pet and there was a whole sequence where she was basically et from et in his world and he was like you fucking peed on my carpet and she's like responding the way i assume a dog does in its head where it's like you didn't take me outside soon enough and that's my fault that you know like i was just like this is this does not garner any desire for me to find out that you'd be fucking later now i'm like you're gross that's nasty I have a defense for that. Mm. Defense? So when he first found her, he did not realize that she was actually an intelligent being or anything. He legit was going to keep her as a pet. Yes, that's my problem. That's not your, – your your defense is not the solution. It's the problem is that he, for the longest time, saw her as a pet and then was like, I want to fuck that pet. Well, I think <laughs> then maybe then maybe just in general, alien romance probably isn't your thing because that's a really common thing. It is a common thing. It is – is under is learning and understanding oh you actually are an intelligent being oh you know you're not you know just like a wild animal or something that i found in the forest yeah you know that's like i said i know that that's a personal thing one if it's your kink not judging your kink you kink away not for me not at all (laughs) it didn't bother me he came around fairly quickly to realize that she wasn't something that he could keep as a pet yeah it was actually pretty early on that he was like wait a minute this thing talks and has like complex emotions the okay. problem is the the peeing incident happened after that the peeing incident is not my favorite scene <laughs> yeah no i don't actually I don't really that love that the, the peeing incident happens but yeah I, I like if it was early on and they're like completely don't understand each other whatsoever but they'd already started to learn each other's words and i was like oh i don't like I this was, it is a realistic thing like every because i've read this book twice now yeah. so when i get to that scene i'm just like "Ugh, this is kind of cringy but also that's entirely that's realistic probably would happen i will say they do focus on her like need to go to the bathroom quite often yes in this yes book. <laughs> and i'm like I never, I never. What do they do? That. That's the other thing. They don't explain what he does to take care of relieving himself. We don't know. You know what goes in must come out somewhere. What do spiders do? Do we know? Do they just like defecate and urinate the way other creatures do? I don't know. They might be like flies, where they like puke it back up. It, that's entirely possible. I know sloths only go potty once a week. Pros, right? They Living come the down, dream. They come down to go to the bathroom. 
That is, they come down out of the trees to go to the bathroom. It's the worst day of the week for everyone. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. hoping they don't come down collectively and take a shit. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be horrible. Okay. It's group shit day, everybody. Time to go. Time to go. I don't know. I'm pretty backed up, Jerry. Well, it's too bad. It's shit day. So get your ass out of here now. Why did you pick a name for a sloth and it was your dad's? I don't know. It felt right. <laughs> Oh, no. (laughs) Okay. Now, should we talk about some stuff we liked? Sure. Why not? So as much as I found the political aspect of it annoying, the world building is very intricate and it is very nice. The delivery of it was wrong. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not like somebody just said, well, I don't know. What's the temperature? 30 degrees? That's too cold to function, right? No, bitch, it's not. Um, I don't remember if it was third. We did the math for ice planets. I don't remember what it was, but it was not terrible. It was like, oh, d- you're fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I liked all of the intricacies. I didn't like that it was a massive fucking dump of it in the beginning. Because it was not only the fact that Ivy doesn't show up for the first fourth of the book, but it's also like, I don't understand like every fifth word you use doesn't make any sense to me because you yeah. keep throwing them at me with very little context. Yes. They really yes. committed to that spider talk. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And my ADHD could not yeah. with reading that. But it's even I- worse in the fucking audiobook because it doesn't sound different. And so you have like, you're like partway through that sentence before you're like, the fuck did you say oh you're doing that fucking spider talk again god damn it (laughs) and was not prepared (laughs) but it is very intricate world building and i did enjoy that i like a lot of the things about that i just wish that they could had actually kind of just like dispersed it more throughout the book you know what i mean Mm. instead of dumping it all in the beginning he has to go there monthly anyway we could learn things about it through the months Mm-hmm. Right. Or as he's explaining his world to Ivy or something yes. like that. Yes. Something I think you you both need to know about the audiobook is that the guy who did the voice speaks in quite the monotone throughout it whenever he's narrating. But, but when he talks as our Catan, our Spider-Man, right, he sounds like Christian Bale in Dark Knight. Like Christian Bale or Christian Bale as Batman? Christian Bale as Batman. Oh. Always like this all the time. I'm Batman. Ivy. Like that. Like that. Did you just bust a gut laughing every time you did that? Because I would. It was really hard not to. (laughs) Ivy, stay. I was like. (laughs) (laughs) So just so you know, that's what it, that's, uh, that's the voice of Catan right there. That's been, that's been your day. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. (laughs) So the, the. At that on top of it, with with all this political intrigue at the beginning, that they all sound kind of like that. So imagine a million little Christian Bale Batmans talking in your ear about political intrigue. <laughs> She's oh. an evil queen. I know, but I'm hungry. Goodbye. You're a bitch. Like. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, it was the time. It was a time. Anywho. Anywho. (laughs) I just thought you needed to know. (laughs) All right. So your issues with the whole like kind of pet thing aside, what did you think of the romance itself? I mean, it's in of the monster romances we've had. I like this one the most. I really enjoyed. I think the problem with it being a slow burn romance, because not only is the beginning very slow, the actual romance is very slow, is that's just not what you expect in a monster romance. Like, monster yeah. romances get to the fucking pretty quick, mm. mm-hmm. uh, which is okay. You don't have to follow what everybody else does. I want I want to be clear. When I say monster romance, I mean one that where they are truly a different species and cultures. So I would not consider, even though it is a monster romance, I would not consider, like, Deceived by the Gargoyles within that framework. Like, if we're talking about she's just fucking a monster, and that's all he'll ever be. There is no pretty version. There's just a monster. How many books have you read? I don't want to talk about it. It's a low number. It is. Yeah. But it's higher than you think it is. Okay, fair enough. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I, yeah, I I liked all of the stuff in the middle. 
Like I did too. Yeah. I liked their time together. I thought they were cute. I thought the like learning how to fish and like dumb stuff like that was not it's not dumb it's obviously survival but I I thought it was fun and and their interactions were playful well and I appreciate that they're getting to know each other they had to learn how to speak each other's language it's not like an ice planet where they just boom all of a sudden had a fix where they can talk to each other perfectly she even says at one point and it kind of made me laugh is that when his his sister showed up she's like I can speak his language. I can understand his language. I did not understand until now how slowly he is actually talking to me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And it's like, I appreciate that because like, realistically, it would take some time to be able to understand what's going on and everything. So the fact that like it slowly went from doing the like weird choppy talking to being able to have full sentences and stuff with each other because they are spending all of their time together except for when he has to go hunt and stuff i will say i did enjoy the uh dirt slash dick situation (laughs) hashtag dirty spider dick um that was pretty entertaining that she's just been saying dick to him this whole time (laughs) yeah the the way that they played with language was really fun because even towards the end of the book where uh katan is speaking in english he still is messing up basic english like saying gooder or Mm -hmm. like saying uh this is a very large time instead of saying a very long time Mm -hmm. like simple things like that i thought were really fun and Mm -hmm. kind of immersive well and because you would mess those up you know Mm -hmm. you English is a weirdly complex language. I know. When when he was like, Ivy, your language doesn't make sense. And sometimes these words have so many meanings and can be used in so many different ways. And I'm like, yeah, English is dumb. English yeah. doesn't make sense. English does not make sense. Um, and I like those things about it. And I liked that it's not even that he just learned English for her. She also learned his language. Right. She can't speak it super effectively, but that's because her mouth is actually not built Mm -hmm. to do the things that it is supposed to be well to be fair his mouth doesn't have lips so he can't say like f very well yep Mm -hmm. well and i as somebody who is has learned a language that's just in general very different um with asl even like even if it's something where you're like translating word to word it's really easy to fuck it up oh yeah Mm -hmm. and let I will never forget the one lesson we had doing during ASL where the teacher was like, no, no, stop. And we're like, why? What are we doing wrong? And she's like, right now what you're doing, what you're signing, you're not signing I have two daughters if you don't close this down. If you go like this, you're signing I have two lesbians. And I don't think you do. And I was like, you don't know my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, I did enjoy that part. What did you guys think of the sex? Okay, so... When it finally showed up. When it finally showed up. When it um, wasn't just nipple tweaking? Yeah. Dick, 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 dick. <laughs> he liked to touch nipples a lot. Mm. I mean, but I get it. It was fascinating. It's like, I've never seen this before. Yes. And it's squishy. And it's squishy. Like, and, oh, I have boobs and I like to play with them. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've had them for <laughs> a long time and I still play with them. So I will say, and it cracks me up because it was one of those moments where I'm like, well, why didn't I realize that that was going to happen? So when it does happen, it's aggressive at first. And you're like, okay. Um, And he tied her up. And I was like, the second it happened, I'm like, well, of course there's bondage in the spider fucking. (laughs) It's literally called ensnared. (laughs) But like, I don't know. I don't know why my brain didn't be like, oh, it's a spider novel. There's going to be bondage. It didn't until it happened. I'm like, oh, hot damn. Hello. Yeah. I will tell you that I came across their Patreon before I ever read one of these books, so I kind of knew what was going to happen already. <laughs> it was, I enjoyed the fucking, mm-hmm. I, w- I, I was a happy person when it finally happened. <laughs> <laughs> the I like the first sex scene a lot, which is the bondage scene. Yep. Like, I was like, mm, okay. But then every sex scene after that was just like the same repeated yeah. and i was like just more aggressive <laughs> yeah and not and not the same as in the same as in more bondage just like he's just holding her to him and yeah. then fucking and that's it and i'm like but there's so many there's so many different there's things so right why, why is she not like being dangled upside down and is like his like nest thing and he's like lifting her with his legs <laughs> be creative many possible right <laughs> but i did enjoy the sex scenes 
I thought they were described well. The knots cracked me up. Like, he went, they went full in on that whole, like, bondage situation. Like, he tied knots all over her. And I was like, oh, oh, all right then. (laughs) <laughs> right, he's supposed to conquer her because apparently that's how spider fucking be do which is you battle and then if you win the battle you get to fuck uh, if you want a sneak preview of how the the claiming goes say you're mine <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm yours i'm yours which by the way, in the context of the queen wants him, blah, blah, blah. So he's supposed to fucking conquer her when he doesn't actually want her. Like, Jesus Christ. Well, no. And if the the ladies, the lady spiders in this book are significantly larger. Yes. Like, Which not even just baby got back. Spiders work. In, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's how a lot of, like, insectoid. It's how a lot of works. animals work, too. The women, yeah. are, the ladies are larger. I appreciated the fact that there was a lot of references to actual spiders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although, uh, not that I like spiders. If they said mandibles one more time, I was about to lose my shit. His mandibles twitched. His mandibles touched her. His mandibles wiggled. Well, but that's the same as saying his lips and lips get said 18 million times in every other romance. Yeah. But this was like, regardless of whether or not it was in romance, sometimes it was just like they're chattering and he's like, Oh, mandibles (laughs) (laughs) mandibles <laughs> <laughs> like, all right that's enough that's enough yeah but yeah i just can't like thinking back to like because the queen won it's time for the conquering the great conquering or whatever like i'm sorry bitch you think that you're worth the effort to have to try to conquer you well Gross. she's the queen she is so. the queen so but she's a bitch yeah, she's a yeah, big old but bitch. like being a bitch don't make you less the queen, <laughs> yeah, right? But it doesn't mean that he has to want to like go to the effort to do that shit. Well, if he didn't, she's gonna kill people. That's her whole threat. Is it like yeah. you don't show up and fuck me on this day at this time? <laughs> you got you got to respect her priorities. Bitch is gonna <laughs> die. <laughs> you know, get to work or they die. Okay. Up to it. Let's go. Here's the the thing that I will say that, other than that being entertaining, um, that I do kind of enjoy is that it's, they somehow managed to find a way to make a matriarchy fucking sexist. <laughs> like, they, they were like, you know what? What if we still make... It so that the man has to conquer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I was like, why did you you okay? I I don't know why they didn't make the queen like awesome, and instead they were like she's uh, gonna be the worst because she's the big bad. Like they they have you rooting for for a man to be in charge for the first time, and you're like, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. It's gross. <laughs> It's not necessarily that we want a man to be in charge. We just don't want her to be in charge. Well, the characters want a man to be in charge. They want him to be in charge. I don't know how much they want him to be like. No. They want, they, well, at least they think that he's going to, some of the characters think he's going to make a play for her throne. No. From what I remember, they said that he maybe could have it. If, if he did join her, he could maybe have the opportunity then to make changes. Yeah. But not necessarily that she he would make a play for her throne, just that he would then maybe be in a position where he could affect change. Or murder her in her sleep. They didn't say that, but that's what I would do. I mean, if I was him, I'd be like, okay, cool, I will fuck you. And then the fucking second you are not paying enough attention, dead. Slit your throat in your sleep, yeah. I'm surprised more people don't do that, honestly, in fiction, where they're like, oh, I got married to this piece of shit. Why don't I just, you know, fucking murder them? And then escape into the tangle because ain't nobody going to be able to find him. Right. The only reason his sister found him is because she knows where his nest is. Guess what? You can make a new one. Go far away. Which is actually what they talk about at the beginning of the second book. He's like, oh shit, we need to like leave, leave. <laughs> you know, I can't help but wonder. Yeah. What the fuck is a Spider-Man human baby going to look like? I have seen drawings. Uh, is it horrible? It looks like a baby, but it's got the coloring of the Spider-Man and then okay. Spider-Face. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I don't remember it having Does it like have 
the segment. Four appendages, or does it got more? I think it had four, but I don't remember. Maybe they like, grow more as you get like, older. Maybe had the legs as opposed to the face. Yeah, I could I could have human with spider like segments and legs. Yeah, I hate I don't like spiders. I hate all. <laughs> I I was fine. I was fine, but I was just like, oh god damn why why did i agree to this i don't know why you agree to it at all because it's we fine had when someone want us to read it for the most part they talk about his upper body right yes which is humanoid-esque other than his mandibles and <laughs> eyes and his skin he's got it's yeah, it's like got, they like, have the exoskeleton essentially yeah, kind like of chitness yeah that's what you call it i like that they didn't it. try to make him something that's just you know like ribbed for her pleasure or something like that they they just were like yeah this is what a spider human hybrid would look like i mean she rakes her nipples across it a few times and she enjoys that yeah notice how raked and scrape aren't as aren't the same thing scraped nasty raked not that bad (laughs) (laughs) one seems like more chafy one seems more like you might lose a nipple (laughs) And I'm not willing to. I like them both. <laughs> I uh, like them where they're at. Thank you very much. Ride, Sally, ride. <laughs> On the note of his body, what is the like little things that come out of his penis? Wh- the like the top end, and then it there's a splurty splurt. No, not his fucking cum. You dumb no, dumb. like the part before though. Yeah, like the little like, like feathery tickle tickle what thing. What is that? The little tickle thing. <laughs> it's like a little hand puppet coming out the end and tickle tickle tickle. I don't I Actually, I do know because I've seen drawings again. But, but what is its purpose? You really went in on these drawings. Listen. I'm not shaming. I'm just saying. When you pay for somebody's Patreon because you're like, I got to know. Do you look at everything? Because <laughs> you paid for it. I I don't think I was imagining it correctly. It looks, in the drawings that I've seen, it looks like little like feathery wisps. <laughs> I don't know why, but that grosses me out. <laughs> and there's like, a couple of them or something. And I'm just like, what? purpose are they also why does he come twice like he has two shots every round does he i didn't catch on to that i did i was like really again again i thought it was just like a lot that was just like a lot maybe that's what the intention was like was to be like oh and he's still coming but it like multiple times at least maybe not every time but i caught it at least twice that she was like and there's more (laughs) <laughs> and i was like why <laughs> explain like does he have a second pouch of ejaculate like what's going on here <laughs> do both balls just deliver like what are we dealing with here oh no second pouch of ejaculate <laughs> that's all i'm gonna be able to hear as i go to bed tonight <laughs> the second pouch of ejaculate thanks wigs i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm not sorry enough but I am sorry. <laughs> I don't think you're sorry at all. <laughs> a little, a little bit. Oh gosh. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, it was really confusing to me because in my head, and uh, but it was really confusing to me because the whole time I was thinking that it was like the same as his outside, like he had a like an exoskeleton, so it was more like a ah, like a like a like a dildo or something. Yes, yes. No, because that's why he keeps it inside. That's why. That's why animals. But it, IRL, she never talks about it getting floppy. That's because it doesn't. It doesn't in the way you think, right? It's soft when it's inside, and then as it gets hard inside, that's what pushes it out. So it, you're never going to see it soft outside. Mm. Correct. So does it curl up like a snail? No. I think it's just like a and human's then, penis, whoop. where it just like gets smaller. Yeah, it just small enough that it can fit up inside your body. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. They got more space than we do because it's made for that. I don't understand. Also, did you know that apparently, I don't know if this is true because I learned this on the internet on like some YouTube video, but spiders <laughs> legs also function the way penises do. They aren't jointed. They just have like bursts of like blood that makes them like move. So they like get hard and move that way. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. no. <laughs> well, don't if we're like doing it. fun facts about animal penises. Um, <laughs> I was talking about legs, man. Apparently, You'll all their legs are penises. <laughs> You'll understand in a minute. Octopuses, one of their legs becomes their penis, and sometimes they rip it off and present it to the female. I would yeah, appreciate a little Kraken bit more effort from the fellas. 
if if they can rip their penises off and present it, then what's your excuse? <laughs> no, the, step in, up. <laughs> different monster romance, but in the stalked by the Kraken and Lillian in Lillian Lark, the the main gal literally looks at him and she's like is your penis gonna fall off when we're done he's like no he's like well that's what happens to octopuses oh my god okay but like if you if you could do that then why wouldn't you just like make one penis fall off intentionally so you've got a dildo that is your penis and then you've got your penis but once it falls off is it hard anymore i don't know Ah. does it have to be hard when it falls off in order to stay hard and then it's hard forever or (laughs) no these are great questions. Listen, all these books do is inspire questions that I'm not sure I want the answers to. And I'm not sure you want the answers to. I do now. I do now. Well, I guess we, we're going to have to write that, I guess. We'd have to research it first. Are you talking about just screw putting any sort of factualness yes. in it? And well, just like write our most own Most of fantasy? these don't put facts in. They're just well, like, willy-nilly, put a dilly up a billy. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. I don't know why Willy di- Willy <laughs> Nilly put a dilly killed me. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm sorry, okay. but I'm not. I really hope that in future books that I may or may not read that they explain more about where Ivy came from. I mean, she came from Earth, obviously, and they gave us the the, the date for like 2160 or something like that. She also comes from Kansas. <clears throat> Wichita, Kansas, she did say. Mm-hmm. Um. And we haven't really talked about Ivy all that much, but I feel like there is so many opportunities for more details because she crashed. She crashed in a ship that was going somewhere. They named the planet. I don't know what it was. I, I could never say it anyway. I think Elium or Elulium. But the thing that I just I just want to know how this ship crashed. Like we learn that since she left Earth, it's been like a hundred and. 20 years 160 years i don't remember which one i feel like it was 160 yeah but we don't know how long they were in space when it crashed why it crashed the ship didn't know where they were so well what's all this business here's the thing the only way that any of her ignorance makes any sense is if it's basically like that um jennifer lawrence movie what the fuck was it called where they're like trapped on the ship and Chris Pratt wakes up and then he wakes up Jennifer Lawrence and I don't know. The point being they're all in these pods and nobody who is piloting is among them, right? It, it, it's just autopilot spaceship go, right? Um because otherwise how are you completely ignorant of what is supposed to have happened and how this could have happened? What well, I also don't understand related to that is Ivy just seems like she doesn't have any skills, honestly. Right. Which yeah. I'm like, so what was your purpose? Like, what was supposed to be your role in this new colony that they set up? Yeah, they didn't really, they didn't really like explain how it is that she got chosen for that. No. Well, and she's supposed to be 25, at least when she left Earth. Yeah. The only thing I could think is like they were looking for people with specific health markers to have the best chance of survival because otherwise she doesn't have anything to offer. Like not in like she's not, but like that would she's she's a twenty five year old you and I the the three of us, um, honestly would have a greater chance of survival in those circumstances than she would have, and our chances would be very low. Yeah, like. She is like the kid who gets pulled for the Hunger Games and has no help right. whatsoever and just runs at the cornucopia and gets sliced and diced. That's her. Because I just kept thinking the entire time of like, okay, even if you don't, you were trained to use very specific tools that you guys brought with, like you should still have the basic understandings of like survival. Yeah. And if you don't, then A, nobody set up this whole program correctly. Because at any point in time, your tools could fail. So you need to know how to function Mm -hmm. without any of that stuff. Because there's no guarantee of anything. And she fully just eats shit at random and is like, we'll see how it goes. And then it does not go well. Yeah. She literally literally has the shits for three days. (laughs) She literally says, I'm not supposed to just eat stuff. But to be fair, what was she supposed to do? Right. Yeah. 
but like if you had a better understanding of like uh uh i i, I don't want to say like markers but like what typically makes a, a plant edible for a human being versus the ones that aren't edible on our own planet it's easier to infer mm-hmm. On other planets. Right. Because even though you don't understand like what toxins and poisons exist, you at least know what your body can do. Right. Yeah. Like you should be able to understand at the minimum that half of the things that we eat as vegetables are just roots. Yeah. So roots are going to be more likely to be something you can eat. Or that a lot of the time, even though we don't typically want to, flowers are usually edible depending because of how they're made right yeah. so just because it's a fruit doesn't make it edible there's plenty of fruit that is not and uh you shouldn't and she found out she fucked around and she found out i think my favorite moment is she has the thought process of like i really should just be eating one thing and then waiting to see how it goes but then she's like nope i'm gonna eat three or five different things and i'm like if you get sick you can't pinpoint which fucking one did it you dumb dumb right of course, she could just fucking die also. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so she died hungry. <laughs> God forbid that ever happened. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Definitely she was not given, like, any preparation for anything at all. Like, also, why are they wearing these, like, silk pajamas in their pods? Well, because that's, I don't know, what would, you, what would you wear in a cryo sleep pod? Well, what they don't, I don't think, do a very good job of explaining is how, what else is on the ship. Yeah. Like, is there is there other clothing that they would be expected to change into when they reach the surface of whatever planet they're supposed to go on? Or, like, what else do they have in there other than these cryo tubes? There's not a lot of that explained. Well, I would, I will say, so they, she does mention that what is of the ship that is there, or at least that can be seen, is tiny. It yeah. is, it is a very small part of the ship. So I'm guessing the, that like the cryo tubes were in like one storage area kind of thing, and then like their clothes and everything and the stuff for the colony or whatever it is they're doing. Is that what they were doing? Yeah, they were colonizing a new planet. Yeah. Um, the colony or whatever it is was in another part of the ship so I think what is implied at least is that part of the ship is what came off and crashed but you'd still think that her first thought not only to oh go see who else is alive is I need to go back because clothes food tools all Mm -hmm. that stuff yeah, I need to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially when she'd been with him for weeks and her clothes had been deteriorating and she didn't have shoes for fuck's sake. Yeah, right. She's walking around barefoot that entire time. I probably would have almost immediately been like, "Hey, spider dude, can we put something on my tootsies?" Oh yeah, I can't walk around barefoot, man. And here's I the cannot. thing: I cannot. I walk around barefoot constantly, but she's literally walking around in a fucking jungle. There's it's just so- dangerous, which is so dangerous, like. Even to just get, like, cuts on the bottom of her feet and then to, like, walk into the stream where she washes herself and stuff. Like, so much bacteria. So much. Like, Uh, we should write a sci-fi romance. Just because every every little thing we'd be like, all right, logistically, you can't do that. (laughs) <laughs> like, like, you can't no, do that the, the, nope nope like i realized uh, after a time your feet would get calloused and she did mention that they that they have become calloused and everything but like ow still like what if you needed to get somewhere quickly right like what you're gonna gingerly run through the forest i'm sorry it's not gonna happen nah you're gonna run through that bitch like you're snow white running away from the huntsman <laughs> yeah and then your feet are gonna be ripped to shreds yeah granted most of the time when they went through the forest did she walk no, not at all. She rode on him constantly. <laughs> well, I think that sometimes in romance fantasy crossovers um, or romance sci-fi crossovers, is th- there is that fantasy element where things just work out. But I think that when you do it that way, you're doing it not necessarily wrong, but you're kind of missing an opportunity. If this is supposed yeah. to be a fantasy that, as in it's, my fantasy to get banged by a spider um then 
in this fantasy world, if he can make her a fantasy dress, he can make me fantasy fucking shoes, make me Cinderella, bitch, okay? <laughs> Give me the slippers. Which he does at the end. He does, yeah. yes. When she steps on something in the ship. Which right. feels like when that moment happened, I was like, why? Is that the first why time? Did you wait this long to do that for She's her? never stepped on a stick once? <laughs> Please. No. And so I, I just think that the the fantasy has to be that all needs are being met, not needs are being ignored. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Because, like, if he's just going to carry me and I don't ever have to walk again, fine. Let these legs atrophy. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, man. My thought process is, can we make the hut bigger? I don't know how the hut, how big the hut was supposed to be, but I just envisioned that it was, like, the size of like a living room right it wasn't even it felt very claustrophobic to me especially with his fucking big ass in there yeah right just swing around take you out with his butt (laughs) i like after a while i would be like okay i'm not trying to be needy here but can we build something just a little bigger so that we're not maneuvering around each other just existing you know what i mean well and if there's gonna be a baby spider oh man yeah no room for that can we make a separate room for sleeping? Yeah. It feels like the bare minimum. I don't know. I just think it's hard for me to get over the fact that he he made her dress out of his butt lace. Um, <laughs> How do you feel about normal silk then? Uh, I, I don't really think about it too much. Okay. <laughs> but it's different when you're, when you're personal friends with the butt lace provider. <laughs> She's living inside a cocoon of his butt lace. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's like, a, it's a little bit awkward. <laughs> Maybe he needs some attentions paid to his butt holes. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I don't even deserve to have a mic. Um, <laughs> well, moving quickly away from that. Uh, <laughs> butt lace <laughs> fuck you um <laughs> i i have so many thoughts about I, I don't know like my brain can't help but comprehend they're in the, these spider-mans are in some version of like a stone age right yeah like and as a human who came from a world of holograms because she mentions holograms mm-hmm wouldn't your thoughts constantly run to like, all right, we need to figure out, do they have metals that can be forged? Do they like, I would just like to be my whole brain would just be like, how do we like progress this society or at the very least my existence in this society? I think that she, I don't know if you've ever seen that comedian who has the joke where he's like, if I went back in time, I don't think you'd ever hear about it. Like, I, I don't think you know. I don't think I'd make a difference. <laughs> I think she's that because uh, bitch doesn't even know what, like how to forage and she's supposed to teach them how to make like elevate their metal craft. I don't I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I guess. I mean, I don't know how to forge, but I've watched enough forged in fire that I could probably figure it out. Yeah, I feel like we got a resourceful streak through us that this character doesn't have. And I do like planting it feels like nobody has done planting. They're just constantly in the hunter gather stage. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. agriculture is one of the key points of like progression of humans and of what we assume any intelligent life is, is the moment that you learn that you can plant something and cultivate it yourself and animal husbandry. And so my brain is just like, these are all the things I would do. My That was one of mine with like, they talked about that particular route that he took her to kind of yeah. be insulting. But that route is also um, used for healing and stuff on their planet. And he's like, but it's like a day and a half away to go collect it. So he didn't want to leave Ivy alone that long. And it's like, you know, you can plant that, right, bud? You can make your own little patch right, right here. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of things where, I, okay, okay, okay. If I'm out of pocket, tell me. But it feels like a, lo- a lot of these monster romances there's an element of if if the male character is is of an equal intelligence capacity Mm -hmm. he's not there's something else that has brought him down a level and it almost feels like and i really don't like this 
it almost feels like that's a way to make even the playing field. Like he has more physical capability than she does, but she understands the world better. And I don't like it. There's something like inherently kind of icky about that. Mm -hmm. Your way, your solution of, of making the, the male female characters equal is to make him dumb. (laughs) Ooh, I don't know. There's something about that. It just doesn't, doesn't sit right, but maybe I'm totally overthinking it. No. And I mean, there's some, some of the male leads that are very intelligent and everything. And you know, they just have different sorts of intelligence and everything. But yeah, there are moments where I'm like, what? It's the it's the the barbarian alien romance, right? right? Yeah. Um, because I've read other sci-fi alien romances where they're not like that. Either they're all in the same playing field, or um, in one of my favorite series, humanity has just, or at least some humans have just discovered aliens, and the aliens are like in Mass Effect, so much yes. further advanced from them. Um, so it's apparently just not your like specific subgenre. Is the like barbarian tarzani this felt very tarzani to me yes, yes. me tarzan you jane yeah they did have that moment in yeah. literally in the yes. script where it was like ivy ivy that's what it sounds like uh, in case we're wondering it's my best impression <laughs> ivy um i was i it was close enough that i almost wanted it to go into that like <laughs> wally thing where she's Eva, (laughs) 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 but she didn't quite go there and I was like that's a damn shame yeah yeah I think maybe some people dislike the idea of being I don't know rescued or whatever by this big strong man who take care of you and think you're pretty full respect to that I mean yeah I don't want to be rescued but I would like the opportunity to turn it down (laughs) I don't know that I would, honestly. If, I mean, you know, if it was rescue or die. Yeah, I mean, that's a different set of circumstances, right? Like, I'm not going to lie. I'd let someone take care of me. I, the problem with that is that I'm a very uncuddly person, so. I think you, I, I, okay, let's just take a dose of realism here. I think that it might sound fun, but I don't think, Danny, you could handle somebody else making all of the decisions for you. Correct. I would rip their left <laughs> eyelid off. Yeah. Especially, especially <laughs> if like this was Danny in the situation and not Ivy and she'd just be like, bitch, I know how to hunt, motherfucker. Get- <laughs> this take isn't that. the first time I've killed something. Back off. Right? Listen, like, I'm going to teach you the materials. Ice Planet Barbarians, different, different book with Danny as yeah. the lead. <laughs> it's actually the second book, yeah. um, which is my recommendation. And we'll get to that. But. <laughs> uh, I'm just envisioning you being like, listen, Catan, I need some materials that look exactly like this, and then I'm going to make a bow, and then I'm going to sit on your back, and I'm going to shoot things. Yep. You run around, I shoot. That is exactly what would happen. <laughs> be like, okay, here's the thing. Give me some of your butt lace. And a stick. <laughs> I need butt lace and a stick. I need butt lace, a stick, and maybe a sharp rock. Thank you. Let's go. Thank you. Let's go. If we can find any feathers or something, perfect. I need to make some fletchings on that arrow. I will. I can do this. I have been doing this since I was like four. I do. I do. Getting back to the butt lace thing just temporarily. I do think it's interesting that they couldn't figure out like the words for dirt, but they sure like managed to figure out silk without any per like like contextual understanding other than it's coming out that spider's butt like butt lace would have been the way i'd explain it <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, um, there there are some words that i'm like okay how the hell did he learn like I, I don't think the word was recommend but like a word like that yes and i'm just like how do you i want to see that scene that's how did he learn grammar yeah. <laughs> enough to get it wrong and she can correct him. Yeah. Uh, like, bitch. <laughs> In a very short amount of time, too. Yes. Like, yeah. It was like two months. Because there's a lot yeah. of languages... In, in human language that do not share the same style of grammar. And people yeah. who are speaking their second language for years still do not get like the correct grammar yeah. all the time. Right. So like the fact that she's like, um, no, that's the past tense. That's not actually what she says, but that's like the attitude yeah. of like, actually. <laughs> 
there was one moment and i don't remember what it was like that she was trying to get across to him but she said that it was like the worst game of charades she's ever had to play because she was trying to get something across to him i do remember that i can't I remember what the I word was the word. it doesn't matter it could it could have been poop oh cooking Mm, the fire cool. yeah 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 she was Gotta trying cook to the meat. explain to him why she needed or that she needed to cook the meat so that she could eat the meat and everything <laughs> it was mm-hmm. the worst game of charades she's ever had to play i was like that was cute i liked yeah. that yeah see in most of these scenarios the reason that the woman is able to survive enough for them to get to the fucking is that she's she's been like peaceful and calm and she handled it the situation are you saying you would die right away wigs yes (laughs) i'd be like get the fuck away bitch no (laughs) i'm not going down without a fight uh even against a giant spider-man what what are my options other than to punch him in the slit apparently (laughs) well go up through the slit punch the dick uh and that's about all I got. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna just sit there and take it and be like, "Yeah, you can fondle these titties all day long." Well, haven't you read enough of these books now that you you have to? You can't. You can't get aggressive. They get aggressive back. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we both know the reality, Liz. <laughs> yeah. So, one of the other things I liked is, of course, is the passage of time. Um, even though it was only a couple of months before Catan was like, you know what? I am going to fuck her. Uh, and there at least was a couple of months instead of like three days in. <laughs> yeah. So that was nice. And yeah. also Ivy mentioned after they had mated that she wasn't like in love. She was like, we like each other like as friends and companions. We like to have sex, but that doesn't mean we're in love. Right. Or even that, like, that's something that would ever happen between the two of us. Right. I also like that she, while she did have that moment of, like, I don't really want to do this because you're a monster and it's weird. Um, She also, like, acknowledged, she's like, yeah, but it was pretty hot, though. (laughs) Uh And so it felt a little less um, uh, assaulty compared to some of the other ones we've read yeah i just i i can't imagine that would be my reaction like if you are on an alien planet and this is the only intelligent life granted it's the only thing she's seen really but this is intelligent life and you're both turned on i'd be like why does it matter you got a dick i got a vagina let's go to town all right let me give you three reasons why it matters liz (laughs) number one we don't know what that thing do as I've stated before. <laughs> you got to find out. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. For all we know, it's got a serrated blade that spins around and well, not nice little flesh. Look at it first. <laughs> or you what if by that point he ain't stopping? Like he showed it to you. Now it's going in. Now um, you're too late because you flirted, you fucked around, you found out. That's what you talk what about it first. You just terrified my vagina. Uh, well... Well, See, that's what I want. That's what I want out there is an alien monster romance where they talk about it first, where it's just like, hold up. My I know, thing I know we want to do, do this. this. <laughs> I know we want to do this. But is this logistically a good idea? Right. <laughs> Sometimes you got to have that conversation like just with a human partner where you're like, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to fit. <laughs> <laughs> they do have those conversations in, in romance. Like, I don't think that'll work. Yeah, and the answer is always, it'll work. It'll work. <laughs> it'll work if I force it. Oh, God. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, so that's number one. <laughs> uh, number two, <laughs> we don't know what that semen do. <laughs> okay, that's I, I will get back to that once you get to your third point. Right, like, I'm just going to say, like, what what kind of monster birth are you going to give? Human birth ain't great. Human birth and great. And then you're going to have something with fucking six, because that's a contentious issue here. Six <laughs> legs coming out, scratching you all the way out. I will get back to that after you, you do your third point. All right. All right. And number three, what if he falls in love and now you're stuck with this man forever, which is the premise of all these books. And you're like, it wasn't that good. Okay. First of all, 
It's always that good. <laughs> it's always <laughs> that good. I is These are fantasies. <laughs> I know. Okay, but the semen thing. Here's the reality of that. Like, the reality of that is you species don't mix okay yeah. like i understand all these books it's cute to be like oh it's a half and half that that doesn't work it, that's yeah. not how science and biology works say that to a deer bro they're within the same genome, <laughs> for fuck's sake. well okay 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 if, what is humanoid enough and what do you mean deer bra <laughs> you just fucking said shit you don't know nothing <laughs> okay, no, there aren't there aren't deer say, zebra are no mixes, but there zebra. are mule zebra zebra mixes. It's okay. called a zonkey. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, but they're both both of the horse family. Yes. Still, point stands. Where do you where what stops? Where is the cutoff of humanoid enough? How the fuck are you going to find something that's humanoid enough on another goddamn planet? Who fucking knows? I'm just saying it's not real. We're all made of stardust, Liz. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you can embroider that on a pillow. I can't. I Danny can embroider that on a pillow. I can do that. Um, <laughs> I can get it embroidered on a pillow, okay? By the uh, way, I feel very called out through this entire <laughs> podcast this time. I haven't said anything to you. No, I, but Wiggles you've... is just coming in hot <laughs> with her hatred of monster dicks. I don't even have a hatred of monster dicks. I just got questions and y'all seem to be able to walk right past them as if they're not glaring red road closed signs. <laughs> I'm just saying the, the, the mixed species and like the worry about impregnation is impregnating. Yeah. It, it's not re- like realistically. No, I'm sorry. No, you never know. You never know what that spunk got. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only real concern is if, it's not like a... What if mix- that's unsanitary? <laughs> what if it's all, I'm going to fuck you up biologically? Well, that's that, that was... There are some human gist that will also do that. Well, that's what I was going to say as far as like the, the only concern is if the 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 semen is... An, it's not like going to impregnate you, but it will like harm you. Also, also, and I'm surprised we haven't talked about this yet on this podcast at all. <laughs> what about them alien STDs? Right? We don't know what that... We don't know what we're getting into there. That's for, that's for real. That's for real. Yeah. Right? Are, you don't know where that dick's been. You don't know where that dick's been. Listen, when you're living out in the jungle and every day is a question, you just go for it. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. I Maybe. Say, I've read quite a few, like, alien romances and stuff where, like, they mention that you can't pass diseases to each other. That didn't get mentioned here. I know. It didn't get mentioned here. <laughs> I'm saying that I've read quite a few where they mention that, that we can't pass diseases to each other, blah, blah, blah. Also, that feels like just a, like a catch-all, I'm not going to take responsibility for the reality of my world building, because let's be so honest, you can get like STDs from animals without ever having had sex with an animal. So like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> Uh, I just feel like you don't want to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Look, oh. someone needs to ask the hard questions, and if it ain't gonna be you two, it'll be me. Fine, let's I mean, go back I'll to fucking vampires later. Talking about you know a dick. There's a lot of questions when it comes to a dick. <laughs> Is it circumcised? <laughs> But there's so many questions about all of this. Like, let's say you have sex. Uh, let's say this is a vampire romance. Yeah. And you're with a vampire. Yeah. How do they produce semen? And what is that semen? Like? How do they get hard? That's what I'm saying. There's they all don't sorts got blood of flow. There's all sorts of questions yes, out there. I got those questions, too. You think those, You think they're exempt? <laughs> <laughs> Just because I like something doesn't mean I'm not going to question it. Don't get me started on werewolves. <laughs> When he fucks you, is he fucking you with a human dick or a werewolf dick? I need answers. It depends which it form depends he's in. If he's shifted. Yeah. Wiggles. What if he just decides to only shift his dick? <laughs> I don't think that's usually how those work. Option. You never know. Some some universes. You can I just guess. get a, like a werewolf head. Just like, ah! But you're fucking with your regular body. Who knows, Liz? I don't know. I got questions. <laughs> In, oh. in, in, okay, okay. 
if donkey and and the lady dragon can have <laughs> winged donkeys are we using shrek logic now yes there's magic there okay okay now you're introducing magic okay and that's a whole other fucking realm of shit all right we're on vampires are magic <laughs> Yeah. Werewolves are magic. I was just throwing shit at you. We're talking about aliens, so sci-fi, not magic. No magic. No magic. No, no magic. magic. No magic. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. What about Avatar? <laughs> he has a fake blue person body, and they have a baby. <laughs> How? <laughs> I don't. That's also magic because he's fucking <laughs> transformed. He's How the fuck they happens there? They prayed him into his body, which weirds me out a little bit but that's fine it became a doesn't make body. sense it doesn't make sense i know sense. it doesn't make I sense know, it's not supposed to it's <laughs> sci-fi we're not talking about that one we're talking about spider dick <laughs> that's just what we're calling it from now on spider dick i loved the fact at one point when she was calling him spider-man this is such a deep cut and i don't even know if they meant to do this um is he was like not strider man and in my brain, I was just like, aren't Striders what they call the half human, half spider people in D&D? <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> I was like, oh. I was hoping for an upside down kiss. Like, it's there. Take the opportunity. Just just, just do it. Just do it. That would have been hilarious if she was like, listen, can we just try something? Right. And he's I like, just wanna, yes, mm-hmm. but she is also like over a hundred years in the future from that movie but and that's why she's boring (laughs) (laughs) that's why she ain't got no skills (laughs) because she never watched Tobey Maguire play (laughs) Spider-Man this explains everything (laughs) what is this what is this conversation? We've gone off the rails. Yes, we have. Um, I feel mostly responsible. <laughs> Do you? Do you? Because <laughs> you are. Yeah. You let me. <laughs> you didn't like sing it. <laughs> so like, what? You gotta, you gotta be on it, man. You gotta always be ready. I'm not. Well, on that note, let's wrap it up, you guys, with some butt lifts. <sighs> <laughs> with some butt lace. Wrap it up with your butt lace. Okay. So, <laughs> oh my God. What are you guys' ratings here? What do you think of the spice? So, spice, I would give it a four. I mean, really? 3.5. Really? 3.5. <laughs> it, was, really? it was aggressive. And I one time. That. One time it was yes. aggressive. But there was, okay, one time, but there wasn't exactly a lot of spice to begin with. Like, it happened a couple of times, but, like, not a, sh- a shit ton. I think they I had sex three them. or four times. Yes, I enjoyed the sexy scenes. Also, I love me some bondage. But, like, it took forever. Yeah. I'm going to give it a three, I think. Because, basically, they did what uh, Shonda Rhimes chose to do with the first <laughs> season of Bridgerton, which is, like... It's pretty fun. It's not. It's not very spicy. Spice. Have some fucking spice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so conflicted because, like, I want to also get a 3.5 because of like the spice that existed, but because it took so long to get there, I'm like, the whole book, the amount of spice in the whole book is like a two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I guess I'll also land on a three. What about your romance? I'll give it a 3.5. I liked them. I'll also give it a 3.5. They were cute. I'm going to do a three. Um, mostly because of the pet thing grosses me out. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Fair. Enough. fair. Mm. So your overall rating then? Uh, him and Han and him and Han. I guess I'll give it a 2.5. The first time I read it, I gave it a 2.5 as well because I almost DNF'd it. I was just like yeah. 15% in and I'm like, did I? Did, did we fuck up somehow on what this book was supposed to be? I will say the reread is a lot better purely because you're like already prepared to just take a minute. So probably I'm going to stay with 2.5. I'm gonna, I'd give it a three. Sure. All right. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Pretty so solid. if you liked this butt lace, <laughs> what are you going to watch, read, consume to I get your nuts butt lace face? Buck lace fix. Buck, but lace fix. It's Ice Planet Barbarians. 
It is. Um, I yeah. will say yeah. that it is, in my opinion, closer to the second witch. Second witch. The second witch. The one I, in the woods. <laughs> in my opinion, I think it's a lot closer to the second book, which is Barbarian Alien. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, where our, our main character, Liz, is kidnapped, which is not a, not a necessarily a fun situation um to to like mentally go into but then they live in a cave together and they kind of get to know each other that way and understand each other and she uh, is from oklahoma knows how to hunt the entire time she's just like hey i'm i don't need to stay in the cave i can do things Mm -hmm. so she's a stronger i guess character in that way but okay so is that what you're both are doing? You're both going with the Ice Planet Barbarians? I picked a specific one. Though. Oh. Oh. The second one. Oh. So she picked Ice Planet Barbarians, and I picked Barbarian Aliens. Alien. Uh, I'm going to go with Edward Scissorhands. Is that all because he's... Like, what? Why? <laughs> it's because why? <laughs> because why? Um, I, I'm picking it mostly for the the compromise uh, that isn't really a compromise, where it's just two people who find something that they like about each other, um, regardless of what anyone else would think. Um, and honestly, like, we, I just needed an excuse to recommend Edward Scissorhands <laughs> for one of these because you should go watch it. It's super fun. I mean, and I then it's sad. And Edward then it's, yeah. So, um, honestly, it's, it's kind of like Leonardo's, uh, Oscar. It's not really necessarily meant for this one, but collectively this one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you got us there yeah. you got us there yeah okay well that's what we got there folks if you liked this episode uh please find us out on the socials at wrong dust jackets or just wrong jackets on x or go, go to our website at wrongdustjackets.com. find us out there like our episodes review our episodes send in thoughts and comments and what you're thinking We'd love to hear from you. Tell us what to read next. We read this one. Which was a recommendation. It yeah, was. It was a recommendation. Yeah. Yep. Yes. yeah. We read all about the spider dick. Spider dick. Spider and dick. Butt-lace. And on that note of spider dick and butt lace. <laughs> bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you.